in my grandfather's field where we farmed, there was a big mud hole. I thought it was just where an old pond had been that hadn't held water, but my dad said, no, that's where the airplane crashed. Well, when he first started telling me that, I thought, okay, this is a fish story, you know. This is 19, in the late 1950s, there aren't that many airplanes. This is quiet Cumberland County. Airplanes just don't crash in Cumberland County. On Halloween, October 31st, 1948, a C-47 was flying from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base to an Air Force Base in Oklahoma. Well, over central Illinois, they lost one of the engines completely, and the other one became so overheated that the pilot was afraid he'd lose all control of the plane, so he did a kind of controlled crash and ended up in a wheat field very close to my grandfather's house. When they first landed, the plane abandoned, or the, the crew abandoned the plane because they were afraid it would explode. You know, they didn't know how they were gonna get the airplane out. They immediately had people from Chinook Air Force Base at Rantoul come down. The plane was under guard 24 hours a day, my dad would say, and it was there for six weeks. The C-47 was an important, expensive plane. It was used extensively in World War II. On December the 8th of 1948, Jimmy Doolittle Jr., who was a captain in the Air Force, flew in from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base to, Sham to Rantoul to Chanute Air Force Base and then came down and he was going to fly the plane out. The newspaper report says that as soon as the plane started moving, they kicked on the jet packs and within two seconds, which seems like an incredibly short time, the plane was 30 to 40 feet in the air. And another report said that as soon as they kicked in the jetpacks, the whole area was just enveloped in white columns of smoke from those jetpacks. But at any rate, they got it safely in the air. The plane was flowing safely to Chinook there and, uh, and was completely repaired. A short time after that, it was flown back to Wright Air Force Base, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, because 12 airmen had become stranded in, in Greenland. And this was the only plane that was already fitted with jetpacks, so they added two more jetpacks to it so they could fly this plane to Greenland to rescue those 12 airmen that were stranded there. A newspaper report said there were around 50 spectators um, there in the morning of the takeoff. I know that the Decatur Herald was there and the Green Up Press, but apparently there was some national news agency there also. They created a newsreel about the takeoff, and somebody said it was titled From Green Up to Greenland because that plane had started there and then went to Greenland. Incidentally, it took us until the 1960s to get that area of the field farmed and filled in well enough that we could actually farm it without getting stuck there anymore. But every time I worked that field, I'd think of my father's airplane story. There aren't many things that draw national attention to Cumberland County, um, and that was just one of them. But it was just a story that had echoed in my mind from my dad telling it and my talking to my uncle's family a little bit. I have an 11 year old grandson that I want to relay that story to some at some point in time when he can comprehend it and actually remember it. In the late 1930s my folks bought their first property in Cumberland County. Our home was about a mile east of uh, where the Dewey School was located. And uh, I remember vividly the first day of school that my brother and sister left for school. And I wanted to go with them. Uh, I wasn't quite four years old yet, so of course I couldn't go. And I begged her to let me go to school with them. And after much begging, she finally said that when I was five, I could go to school. The fact that there was no playground equipment, uh, not a swing, not a merry-go-round, not a teeter-totter, didn't bother me because I, I wanted to go to school. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about playtime. <laughs> There was a, a water well on the grounds, and there was a cistern at the southeast corner of the front of the school building. But neither of those water facilities provided water for the students that was safe to drink. So that provided an opportunity for 
uh, one of the children in the school, usually uh, the oldest boy, to carry water from one of the neighbor's homes, and for that he earned a dollar a week. There were no hot lunches. We all carried a, a dinner bucket, and we often exchanged the contents of those dinner buckets. Uh, in the winter time, when we had the furnace was going, we could bring a potato or a, a jar of soup or something like that from home, and the teacher would place those inside the uh, door of the furnace on a little shelf that existed there so we could have a hot lunch, and that was really special on a cold winter day. Electricity had not yet come to the, to, uh, uh, the country, and uh, so uh, the teacher was responsible for building the fire in the furnace and keeping it going. Country school teachers were responsible not only for the maintenance of starting the fires and everything <laughs> and teaching the students, but they also had to get out and play with the students as so though they were the PE teacher and a participant. But the teacher got out and, and helped with that and uh, uh, played, played with us, and, um, and she had to take care of the maintenance, the cleanliness of the school building. And for all of that, she was paid $50 a month. We learned creativity because we had so little to, to work with. We learned about caring and sharing. We, the, the students had to bring their own things to school to play with and share with everybody else. We learned about uh, nature and the love of God and country, and all of those things contributed, I'm sure, in a big way to my later life. Yoga Days uh, started back in 1948 and at that time a group of men who were members of the Chamber of Commerce. They were energetic men, they were civic minded and had a lot of energy and they decided to start a celebration for people in the yoga and friends and relatives. They had a lot of uh, activities and it was just a one day event at that point. So on, then in 1949, they did it again. And since that point, they have, we have had a Neoga Days. It, I, in the beginning, it was called a Neoga Celebration. And then it moved into Neoga Days. People would, um, would come back. They would plan their family reunions around Neoga Days. I had one gal tell me, she said, we had, they had moved from Neoga to Texas because of a job and they, um, she said, as soon as we heard when the yoga days was going to be, we planned our vacation. We had to come back, visit with friends. They had class reunions. They would have family reunions. Just meet up with friends. But the kids really were uh, excited. There was just an awful lot that, uh, the games that they had for kids, the rides. In 1956, which was our centennial, that was a real big deal. They had bearded contests, period clothing contests. They also, during that time, had horse pulls. Ray Walk was a person that, uh, he was uh, in, engaged in farming and he was always around horses. So he knew the people to contact in the surrounding areas and that was really a big deal to have the horse pulls. We did have the sesquicentennial, started on a Tuesday and lasted till Saturday. And on Tuesday, the first thing was a tea put together by Sherry Cohen, and she did a lovely job. And all, we all dressed up in period clothing. We had Peggy Short stunts, put together moments from the past, and that was really informative, I think, for everybody who came to that. Parades were always so much fun. Uh, if you were ever here uh, the day of the parade, it a, would start like at the high school and come all the way out to the park. You, anyone could get in the parade that wanted to float or had a horse or had a tractor or a truck. Um, the Shriners come at this point and our, all the queen, con, queen contestants from around uh, other towns as well. We've had three centurions 
who have been Grand Marshals. So the first one was Winnie Bingaman in 2000, and then Helen Short in 2015, and then Mildred Gentry in 2017. It was just one day at the very beginning, then it went to two days, and now it's three days. It generally starts on Thursday evening, Thursday evening about five o'clock, and that's when the kids, when the kids really come out. <laughs> yeah. Yoga Days now, it's bigger, it's better. It's evolved into a real community event. I mean, it always has been a time of unity, a time of celebration, of celebrating who we are and celebrating the fact that we do come together, that everyone does work together and that we can have fun. Long before we had cell phones, the internet, and the World Wide Web. We had television, party line telephones, and radio. That's how we got a lot of our information. That's where my mom, Vera Dial, comes in. She owned and operated a dress shop in the early 1950s on the square in Toledo. After a few years, she joined her husband, Vernon, and they um, established Dial and Thompson Implement Company. As time progressed and, and uh, technology was starting to grow and expand. Uh, the radio came, the local radio came to our area and Doris Mitchell had a program on a radio station in Effingham. The Cumberland County News with Doris Mitchell began as uh, 1957 I believe as like a little five minute insert and uh, very quickly it expanded to 45 minutes of various news, current events, gossip, uh, all about Cumberland County. And it was just a, a blend of, of uh, personality and charm and confusion and chaos and authenticity that really, it resonated with people. And several times she asked mom if she would fill in for her. One time she was sick and mom filled in for her. And mom said of course she would do it and she loved it. And at that time, mom wasn't on the radio, but. Not long after that, she was approached by WKZI at Casey, which was a country western station at that time, to do a 15-minute Cumberland County news program from 10.45 a.m. to 11 o'clock, Monday through Saturday. So Mom um, would do the radio program out at their business. They set up a microphone, and she would sit at her desk, and she would give the news. Um, she always included the weather and and uh, always just like she was just talking to you. It's like you, somebody was sitting there and she was just carrying on the conversation. The broadcasts were alive. So if the, the telephone rang at the store, you heard it. Mom never, never missed a beat. She just kept right on giving the news. And it was a short program, but she got a lot in in that 15 minutes. She just reported on whatever was going on. She, she reported on um, county events like football, basketball games. Uh, so she had her own little sports segment and she also would talk about uh, parades, festivals, anything that was going on there, as well as the things that went on in people's lives. And I think she was so real that a lot of people made a connection with that. And I think that's, uh, that was important for her. I'm G. Stanley Albin, and my first initial is Glenn, and that was my dad, and uh, Stanley was my grandpa, so I don't have a name of my own. I was born in Terre Haute, Indiana, so I'm a Hoosier hotshot, not an <laughs> Illinois sucker. Great, great grandpa James Madison came from Kentucky and homesteaded there on the family farm. It was in the farm family for a hundred years, so it was designated a centennial farm. We still own it today, and it will go to my granddaughters eventually, so it will be in the family a long time. The next step is 150 years that we're looking for. There's an Alban Bridge right next to my house, the Township Bridge, and it has a plaque on it that says Alban Bridge built in 1922. 
My dad uh, drove a 16-wheeler for Hayes Freight Lines in Indiana. His right leg was smaller than his left because he had polio at an early age. He went to Warm Springs, Georgia, where President Roosevelt had a uh, institution down there that helped him get out of that. I went to first three grades in Mattoon, then I moved to uh, Neoga, and we went to a one-room school from fourth to the seventh grade there. Then it was consolidated into a, a Pioneer, which had all grades in it, and I was in the eighth grade there. And then I went to Neoga High School, participated in all sports pretty much, I had a pretty good baseball player. I batted fourth. After high school, I went on to uh, U of I. I flunked out of there because I partied too much. And so then I, they said, take a year off. So I went down to Eastern and finished up down there as a business teacher. And I taught 34 years pretty much in the yoga schools. I taught business classes, the bookkeeping, typing, shorthand. I remember in typing class, I would uh, be on a wastebasket to get them to try to get in rhythm on their typing. Anytime I see a student now, I said, I should have taught you more. I have a son and a daughter and they live just across the road from me. Since my family is here, that, that gives me great pleasure to be close to them. 79 years, it had been quite a few changes. In the yoga, there used to be a pool hall on the corner, Pop's Pool Hall, and then there was a drugstore next to that. And Cass Stevens Grocery uh, was the other way down the street. And we used to come in weekly and uh, attend a movie. We used to drive Studebakers, and, uh, and they had a pointed nose in the middle and a pointed fender on each side but I no longer have those, but I do have a 76 Corvette Stingray, and I enjoy driving it. Unlike our neighboring town of Toledo, they have 989 happy souls and 11 sore heads, and we don't have any of those in the yoga. February of 2017, uh, I went to Monations in Houston, Texas, and that's where my business is, and I went to uh, listen to some guest speakers and things like that. Across the stage, the, back, the whole backdrop said, if all your prayers were answered, would it save the world or just yours? And immediately, I, it got my attention. Our gratitude ambassador came out on stage and she said, I want you guys to bring back something into your community. I want you to bring back love and support to your community. So I come back home and I had no clue what to do. And I looked at Facebook and you know how ads flip up on Facebook and it said autism equipment. And I thought, well, man, that would be cool to have in the Y. The name of our group is Autism Acceptance in Cumberland County. Although we just, we let all special needs come. We had our first meeting in, um, it was October of 2017. We had a group of parents come over to our house, I sobbed. I had no idea. This one girl hadn't even been out of her home a whole year, because how could she? she they, have no, they had no groups to go to. They had no safe place to take their children. They needed this group. So all of a sudden, we've got 37 kids coming, and we've got the parents, and we've got the grandparents. So our first full meeting we had, it was, it was in December, but then, uh, how, how we evolved then was almost opposite of what we thought it would be, but it's gone more into community and resources. And it's just, for the parents to all talk and to be happy is like, it's amazing. So once we got into the Y, YMCA when it opened up, we were allowed to come in there in February. Uh, we have monthly meetings and you do not have to be a member. And we encourage mom, dad, brother, sister, and the child on the spectrum to come. You don't have to be a member of the Y. We welcome you with open arms. And, and that's what it all is, just the community of the connection. More and more and more people have opened up autism uh, groups in their communities. I mean, I, the last I counted, 23 more people have done that. I mean, in the UK and Canada. I had no idea what 
if all your prayers were answered, would they change the world or just yours, what that really meant. And uh, you guys, it has changed it. You get some good hugs. You get some hugs. And one little guy says, when you die, can I run this? Yes, you can, buddy. <laughs> it might be sooner than you think, so you better get a little older. So that's approval. And we're back. We're celebrating yes. still. What great stories we oh have my tonight. Goodness. They are so amazing, aren't they? They, they are. really are. And we're so glad that you're tuning in with us tonight. Once again, we still have a house full of people. Yes. They're sticking with us tonight, and so are you. Of course, of course, Sam is over there rubbing his head. I don't know. He's well, you know what? We just heard his story. You know, what? Oh, wasn't that so yes. sweet? Gee, Stanley Alvin, I love your story. I love it. He's in the house with us tonight. He's a character. He's funny. But you know what I love about stories like that is that you get to hear about the memories that oh, people yes. have of growing up in Cumberland County. Absolutely. And I'm so glad that we can share them with all of you tonight. Just going for a walk down memory mm -hmm. lane. That's what we're doing. And what and we want you to do is continue walking down memory yep, lane with us absolutely. by calling and getting a DVD so you can watch these stories at your leisure anytime that you want to. And once again, there they are on your screen, $75 for one, two or more are $60 each, and the number's at the bottom of your screen. We know you're sitting there watching, so just pick up the cell phone. You don't even have to get up. <laughs> That's exactly right. I have some shout outs to give. Joy from Green Up, she called. Yeah. Cheryl from Toledo. Yeah, Jenny here we go. from Green Up. Mary Ann from Matching. Yes. John from Toledo, and Mary from Mattoon. There you go, <laughs> yay! Okay, does anyone know how many we're up to? We are how up many to we 20. Up to? 20? All yep. right, well, we've met the goal so far. Yes, we're gonna we give have. it a challenge for 10 more, 10 or more. more. Let's break That's the record right. this time. Let's go for 15. Oh, 20. I think we can do it. Yeah, let's do I it. I think we can do it. I'll tell it. you what, for anyone who has seen First Neighbor Bank in a parade, oh, I want you goodness. to call in tonight and get a copy of a DVD. Now, we know they've been in every parade, oh, yes. no matter how big, no matter how small. Isn't yes. that right? So we want you to call in. Oh, there we go. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so give us a call and tell... Um, the folks that you want to talk to, Carol Joe, she'll hop oh, up here and say hi to you if you want to. on the screen. Yep. We, you know what? We're all family here, aren't yes, we? Yes, we are. And the greatest thing about the WEIU family is there's always room for one more. One more. <laughs> Happy souls and sore heads. That's exactly right. We'll take them all. So here's the thing. We want you to give us a call. We've got some phone uh, operators on right now, but we have three available. The DVDs are $75 for one. Two or more are $60 each, so make sure that you don't go anywhere. You just pick up that phone right now and give us a call. And uh, I went to uh, talk to somebody here. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let you take that phone call. So forget that. We'll get back to Kathy in just a minute. Wanda Kay, over to you. <laughs> well, I've got Millie Lee. I was going to talk to Millie Lee, but she's back there talking on the phone. My goodness, every phone. We've got a phone, friends. Every phone in the house is being used. We love it. And we got our sweet Jaina. Yes, we do. Look at us. We're all family here tonight. We brought back one of our goodies, but oldies. We, you know why? <laughs> oh, <laughs> we well, we are the Jaina here tonight. We're the WEIU Angels. Oh, yeah. we <laughs> have our former membership manager and our current and new That's membership right. manager here tonight because you know what once you're part of the family you're always part you're of the always family. a part of the family and that's one of the things i always said about weiu tv we want you to become a part of our family Absolutely. and that's what's happening tonight and i want to know both you girls are doing a great job thank you and i'm so excited to be here i want to continue after my retirement to support weiu tv and this program is amazing thank oh, you it is it really is and it's all because what? of all of these people Jana yes. retired and i think she's busier now than she was when she was working yes i am who does that me i guess right. <laughs> the one thing i always said when we had our live nights was you know who else would make a program on cumberland county right no one else but weiu yeah. so right now if you're watching we need you to get on that phone and we need yes. you to call because it's programs like w like cumberland county this is our yes. story that make weiu one of your family 
family right. friendly programs. Yes. Yep. Exactly. And that's so, what we do here. That's what we do. So right now, hey, we we have one person. Oh, or oh come, have on, a phone come on, everybody, give us a call. So, one more call, one call, call, one more call, one more call, one more call, and we got a phone come blitz. On, one more call. Who's gonna make phone, that phone blitz on, happen yes. tonight? Pick that phone up right, <laughs> right now. now. Don't wait any longer. We want you Look to talk to John Barger right here. He what? <laughs> we need him to be busy right now. So, oh gosh, now we need four people to call now. Oh, you oh, missed yeah. him. Gosh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. You know now we need <laughs> more people to call. Four people can still call right now. The phone number's at the bottom of your screen. Yeah. If you're enjoying this program tonight, we want you to call. Uh, uh, one DVD is $75, two or more are 60 each, and I think Wanda Kay is going to talk to somebody. I think I so. Am. She's got Millie Lee Stewart back there. Wanda I Kay, let's hear from Millie Lee. I am back here with the sweet Millie Lee Stewart. Oh now, God. she's a little nervous, she says, but you know the what? You this sweet singing beauty, I don't think there's no nervousness <laughs> in your little body. Well, once I get started, <laughs> you just can't shut me up. That's right. So <laughs> tell us about the sweet music from Jewett. It's most a country. Uh, is that on? My kind of music, yes, check, check. you're on, honey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. See, you can tell she's a singer, check, check. That's what we do. <laughs> Make sure it's on. <laughs> uh, yes, it's mostly country, but of course we have gospel music yes. there too. Oh, and, uh, and I love gospel yes, music. Yes, in our church, I sing a gospel, I sing a special at our church about every Sunday. Oh. And uh, it's just a beautiful little town, although I live south of Green up on a farm since I've been married. Mm -hmm. uh, we still go to the Jewett Church, oh, church that community is church. So great. Oh, and aren't we so glad to have Millie Lee with us tonight? Oh, thank you. oh my goodness. Thank you. Please call in and talk to Millie Lee tonight. <laughs> thank Back you. Back to you, Ken. All right, well, I'm standing here with Jaina, our former membership manager. It feels like old times. I know, it's so not prepared to be on TV tonight. So, but I'm glad I'm here. I'm, I'm glad, glad you're to here. to see all you all and supporting another program on Cumberland County. Yeah, absolutely. We've got more stories coming your way. We're going to hear about Hazel Dell. Can't leave out Hazel Dell. No. Uh, the Rice Family Farm. We've got the Veterans Memorial. Oh and Neoga Churches. Nice. And uh, Malin Vota, which is part of the Short family over there as well, and Early Neoga Business. David Cameron, one of your favorite storytellers. Oh my goodness. You know what I loved about David Cameron? David, everything he would tell, and he said, and it was so great, and it was so big, and, and <laughs> everything it was, just was like, wonderful. Oh, it was He's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, like I loved his story so much. Yeah, we love all of our storytellers. We tellers. really do. You know, it's one of those things when you're on a program like this, you get to know so many great people from around you the community. Do. And we always say, once you come in the studio and once you're a storyteller, you're friends forever. Absolutely. Yep. And family forever. And, and family. Forever. family. Forever. And we want you to be a part of our family by calling and we becoming really a member do. because when you call tonight, and get a copy of the DVD. Um, I want you to get one copy for $75 or two or more for $60 each. And uh, you won't want to miss out on this because we've got lots of stories to share. There's 30 of them and 31 storytellers because one of our storytellers is, I believe, from out east, David Mitchell. And so he was part of the storyteller with Brenda uh, Jones, who talked about the ladies on the radio. And speaking of storytellers, I have Kathy Claybaugh. The phone is not ringing right now, so it's we'll go ahead not. and interview you. So Hi. I think it's been a blessing to get to know you and to um, know about all these different things that you're doing in Cumberland County with the autism program. I'm so glad that we were able to make that a part of our show. I'm so thankful that you included us as new history because we will pave the way and open more doors to autism in Cumberland County and the surrounding counties. So uh, just check us out on our Facebook page yeah. uh, for more information, autism acceptance in Cumberland County. We'd love to have you. There you go. That's how you find out more about the Autism Acceptance yes. Program. So if you're looking Hi, for everybody. information, <laughs> check them out on Facebook. I'm so glad you're here with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Wanda Kay, back to you. Oh my goodness, that Kathy Clayball, she is the sweetest thing. I know you can't wait to talk to her tonight, so please pick up the phone and call and order your DVD. I'm telling you, these are just the greatest stories and such rich history. And you know what, if these stories, if we didn't allow them to tell these stories, this beautiful history could be a thing of the past and forgotten. And I'm so glad that it doesn't have to be forgotten because we remember, we remember you. We want your story to be told because you're important to us. Yep, absolutely. We're all part of a great big family tonight, yes, part of WEIU. We're glad to have you back, Jana. Thank oh, you for coming yes. on with Thank us tonight. You. Thank you for sticking with us. We've got more stories coming your way. Like I said, we are going to hear about Hazel Dell, the Rice Family Farmland, Veterans Memorial, uh, Neoga Churches, Malin Vota, and Early Neoga Business. Well, let business. me say something really quick okay. about Hazeldale. 
Hazeldale. Hazeldale had a had sheet music to a song called Hazeldale. Yep. And we got our very own Cameron Craig to play the music for Hazeldale yeah. while Linda Matherly tells the story. Yeah. It is pretty phenomenal. So that music yeah. is actually Hazeldale. You know How what? Is that? When I went down there to look in the historical museum, which you'll want to do because it's full of history. Oh, yeah. So if you're eager to learn more after tonight, that's yeah. another way to get it. Watch your DVDs, share it, and then get more yes. history. But when I was flipping through the books, I saw that and I'm like, Hazeldale? There's a song about Hazeldale. So that's when Cameron decided to do that. So when you hear that, the music playing is the Hazeldale song. How cool is that? That is just the coolest thing ever. All right, so don't go anywhere. We're going to get back to the show. Yes. Give us a call. We're standing by. We'll see you in a bit. Yay! <laughs>